U.S. Marshals are still searching for one suspect in the deadly ambush shooting of four high schoolers in Roxborough last September. And now the reward for information on the whereabouts of the fifth suspect is up to $50,000. Yes, 14-year-old Nicholas Alzalde died after being shot outside of Roxborough High School just as a junior varsity football scrimmage had ended. Three other teens were shot and injured. Four other suspects, by the way, in this case, ages 15 to 21, they have already been arrested, but there's one more person out there. Uh, Nicholas's mother, Meredith, joins us again. Um, oh, boy. Thank it's been, you for being what here. is it, over a little over seven and a half months now since we talked with you and since Nicholas lost his life? Yeah, it turned seven months on uh, the 27th. So. Yeah. Yeah. So let's remind people a little bit, because it's been all these months, about Nicholas. How do you describe him? Um, it's impossible to describe any person in just a few sentences, but Nick is really the kindest, sweetest person I've ever met. He's funny, and he's just my entire reason for being. He's my only child, and I am living in what seems like both a nightmare and wilderness without him. Um, he was an innocent bystander, mm -hmm. and people will say, oh, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and I say, no. He is exactly where he was supposed to be, at school, playing football, when some vicious thugs opened fire. And my life and all of my family's life is forever changed. I was going to ask you, how have these months been for you and your family? There's no word. I mean, to say miserable is not enough. It's, I mean, I have raging PTSD. The murder replays in my mind all day long, every day. Even when I'm sitting speaking with you guys, mm -hmm. I can see his body. I can hear the shots. It never stops. Um, it's just, it's, it's complete agony. Yeah. And then on top of that, knowing that one of the suspects is still out there. Two. Two. Yeah, so the one we're talking about now is Dayron Bernie Thorne, who they believe at least was in Atlanta, perhaps still is, um, being aided by those close to him. So when I walk around Philadelphia, I can't help but think as I pass different people, do you know where Nick's killer is? Somebody knows. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. M many mm -hmm. people know. And so that's why I'm here today to which is completely humiliating, but I have to beg people to do the right thing that they should have done seven months ago. I mean, not only do people know where he is, but they are helping him mm -hmm. in his escape and in his continued abscondment from law enforcement. Um, well, you've been advocating for your son all these months, too. Uh, and you really need to be commended for that. You been up to Harrisburg? Yes, I actually testified in March, it was the first day of Ramadan, um, for the Pennsylvania State House Judiciary Committee. And there was some progress. Yeah the, yeah, the the four bills that we were lobbying for passed out of committee. They will need to pass the Senate, so that'll be a fight. But I actually came face to face with the gun lobby that day. Um, I've never been able to put actual faces to that term, but now I can as they... Uh, well, how did they react to you? Well, after I shared my testimony, which was very descriptive about how I watched Nick get murdered, couldn't mm -hmm. save him, held him as he died, uh, as I left the room, uh, they laughed me, laughed at me and, and mocked me. And, and they were that... wearing their AR pins on there. That's disgusting. How did that yeah. make you feel, having them do that? Um, you know, this is tough to admit, but... Uh, that was a Thursday. I didn't get out of bed. I didn't eat. I didn't do anything until Sunday. It took everything out of me. That, that someone, that more than one person could listen to me describe my son's murder, an innocent person. And then laugh. And laugh. Yeah. That's subhuman. It's pathetic. Mm -hmm. uh, why, why is it so important to you that we find this, this Bernie Thorne guy? It's not going to make you feel any better, probably. No, I, I, don't, I don't believe that there's actually 
earthly justice for the family of a murder victim, especially if you've lost your child. That's coming later. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I know that justice will only come in the afterlife, but in the meantime, mm -hmm. Bernie Thorne gets to go live his life down south or wherever he is, and my son, he has no life. So he cannot be trusted to be out in society. He is, he is wanted for multiple homicides. Mm -hmm. So why, why should he have his freedom? He has access to illegal guns. We know that for a fact. He cannot be trusted to be out amongst the general public. And I am about to face my first Mother's Day as a childless mother. Mm -hmm. And what I want for Mother's Day and every day beyond is for people to do the right thing. And they shouldn't need a reward to do that. Well, it's, I know it's not easy to come out and do these interviews that you've been doing, uh, but maybe this will spark somebody to make that call to the tip line. I really hope so. Mm -hmm. I mean, my hope is that if he is in Atlanta um, or that area or wherever he is, that people recognize him. Maybe they had no idea what he had done and they call the line or all the people in Philadelphia who've known all along have a change of heart mm -hmm. and, and feel my pain and turn him in. Let's hope so. Let's yes. Hope this touches someone. Thank you for being, continuing to be so brave and strong through this. Thank you, and I really, I really want to thank you for the opportunity to be here because I really recognize my priv privilege in having this platform, and there are so many voiceless victims and survivors. Yeah, it's the least we can do. Thank you. Okay.